So in today's video, we are going to fix our attack system. In the previous episode, we spent probably about the entire episode trying to debug this and trying to figure out how and what we can do to get this to work. And we didn't find a solution, but today I think I may have come across one. So we're going to try and implement it and see how well we can do. So let's get in and let's get started. So pretty much of the entire episode in our previous one was pretty much a waste of time because we didn't get anywhere. But today we will hopefully do it correctly and get it done. So to do that, we are going to do it in a completely different way. What we're going to do is we're not going to be using our on trigger enter method here that we use in our crate. So before we try to do it, we try to detect what was triggering our crate. So add the script, add the script onto our crate and then try and figure out when something triggers this crate. Uh, see, first of all, see if it is a player, then we can go and check if the player has clicked the mouse. Because if we click the mouse, we would have set a boolean. Uh, that was called attack to true and then if that was true then we can go and do whatever we need to do but we're not going to do it that way because that way is uh is clearly not working and i don't think it's the correct way what we're going to do is we are going to, to do it all in our player class so before we do that let's go and fix some of this so let's go and get rid of all of this because we don't really need that anymore we'll leave this like this just for now actually we'll go get rid of all of this we don't need any of this I don't think actually we'll leave that there let's get rid of this we don't need that let's bring back our update method uh, and uh, to be sh to start off with let's bring let's bring back our start method and in here we are going to randomly assign a strength ver uh, number to the strength so that the crates whenever the the scene actually starts it just randomly gen generates a number and that way all the crates will have different strengths. So, or do we want them to have a different different strengths? Um, I don't really know. So what we'll do is we will do this. Let's go and say strength is going to be equal to random random dot range. And then we'll add in a, what's it called? We'll add in a minimum and a maximum. So this is going to be int min and this is going to be max. So, and these are going to be equal to zero. Minimum is going to be zero and maximum is going to be about four. I'll just say something like that. So we want to have the minimum and the max. Now, if we, if the minimum of the crate is a is going to be zero then we don't really want the crate to be able to be broken so let's go and add in a public boolean and this is going to be called breakable and that's going to be set to actually we won't set that yet what we'll do is we'll say if strength is greater than zero then we can go and say breakable is going to be equal to true else uh what is it breakable is going to be equal to false so we'll do that and hopefully that will work so if the crate strength is set to zero then we can go and not break it. So I'm just going to, just for testing purposes, I'm just going to print out the strength of the box. And that way we should be able to see it. So let's just go and test to see if that's actually working. So we have a crate in our scene right now. Actually, I think we have more than one, but I think this, this is the only crate on our screen now that actually has this method attached to it. So there's zero. So that is working, but it's not just for now. I'm going to Disable this, or well, not disable it, but commented uh, commented it out, and then I'm going to add a strength of two to our crate just so that we can test it. Okay, so that now that we've got a strength to our crate, we can go and start working on our player. So what we want to do here is in our update method, we don't want our update method to be called. I mean, what am I saying? We don't want our ta our attack method to be called unless 
the player is attacking so we're going to need to add a if statement to check this so let's going to say if the input dot get mouse button down so this is going to detect if we press the left mouse button key then we can go and attack whatever is on screen so to do that we'll do that and then what we want to do in our attack method is we are going to play an animation which is what we've done already and then we want to play the swoosh sound what do i what do i do we want to play that sound for our sword so it sounds like we're actually doing something and then after that we need to detect and this is where we had the problem in our previous uh, attempt of doing it we didn't we didn't really know how to detect what we were hitting um so the first way we would, we were doing it was with our on trigger enter so whenever we triggered something we would detect if it's a player or not but that's not that wasn't really going to work because then the, we would have to use it on the crate but we're in this case because we're not only going to be colliding with the crate we're going to be colliding with multiple different enemies uh, and multiple different objects in the scene as well we want to be able to do it all on the player because the player is the one that we're going to be controlling so instead of using the on trigger enter or the on collision enter we are going to use a built-in physics 2d method which is i think it's called um overlapping circle or something like that. like that and what that does is it basically draws a circle around a point and whatever collides or intersects with the circle on the at the point of you pressing in our case the mouse button down it then you can do whatever you want with those so it'll give you back like game objects or whatever they are like um in our case it's going to be a crate which is a game object as well as the enemy which is a enemy uh, so we'll use those and then depending on if it's the enemy we'll either go and kill it or reduce its health or we will go and reduce the strength on our crate and then eventually destroy the crate and then get some coins out of the crate so let's go and do this so we want to do that we are going to want a few variables so i'm going to put here attack just for reference so that we know that these whatever's under this um comment here we can we're going to use for our attacking so we're going to need a few things so we've got our animator on our class already and that's to do with uh, playing the correct animation the next thing we are going to want is we're going to want a point where we can register an attack so let's go and say let's call this a serialized field this is going to be there's going to be a transform, not that, transform, and this is going to be attack point. Another thing we're going to want is we are going to want a range. So because it's we're going to be using a built-in physics circle function, we need to give it a range so that we can actually draw the circle and see how far we can attack because we don't want to be attacking something that's on the complete opposite side of the scene that we can't even see. So we're going to want to give it a, a small radius, which is probably going to be like half a unit or something, just so that we can detect things that we're attacking, which are right in front of us, or if not, like on top of us. So let's go and say this is going to be a public. What is it going to be? It's going to be a attack range, which we can go and change in the inspector, but we'll set it to 0.5 for now. That's going to be a float and we didn't put a public float attack range like that and then the last thing we need to do is we need to give our player some layers to detect our attack so because we will give the ability to attack to our, we'll give the our player the ability to attack at any point in the game we don't want to keep registering uh different objects that it's going to attack in it so we'll go and specify which layers our objects that we can attack are going to be on as well as our enemies so obviously our enemies will be on an enemies layer and then we'll create another layer for our crates and stuff that we can attack so let's go and do that now so let's go and add a layer so in here we are going to want an enemy layer so anything on our enemy layer we will be able to attack and then anything on our attack layer we'll also be able to attack so we'll just add both of those because we can use both of them 
So let's go onto our box and let's go and attach our attack layer onto that. And then on our spider, we should have a enemy layer that we can use for that. So we'll say, we'll go and add those onto there. So on our player, we can now, oh, we haven't saved it, I don't think. Actually, we have. So wait, public float attack range. Why is that not coming up here? Oh, that's the wrong one. So on our player script here, we should have a attack range that we can change, which is good. We'll go set that back to 0 0.5. We need to create this attack point. So let's do that quick. On our player, we need to create a an empty object as a child. And this is going to be our attack point. Attack oh, an attack point. And then let's go to our scene and let's go and reset this. So where is this? This is over there. So this we're going to want to attack something that's in front of us. Now the problem with this is It's going to, let's see, if I go change this to, what is it, minus, does it flip onto the other side? Okay, so it does. So whenever we moved, whenever we move and face the opposite direction, we're going to want to go and change that. But for now, we'll just, we'll, we'll do it so that it only works on the right-hand side. We'll work on the right-hand side because our box is over there on the right-hand side when starting the scene. So let's go and work with that. So we'll save that, and then on our player, we can go and attach this into here. And then back in our script here, we need to create a layer mask. So this is going to be a public layer mask, and then this is going to be the attack layers. So it's going to be attack layers because it's going to be multiple layers. And then let's go and see, can we select that now? This should pop up here and then we should have the options to attack our enemy as well as anything that's on the attack layer mask. Not layer mask, the attack, la yeah, layer mask. So anything you can, you can see, you can, you can select multiple layers, but for now we only really need those two layers. So let's go save that. And then anything that's on those two layers in our scene should allow us to detect. Once we are close enough, the... attack so when we've pressed I, can't, I went blank for a second when we press the mouse button we can go and register that what's called that i can't i can't even speak anyway let's just get into it so what we want to do here is once we played the the animation and the the sound for it we need to go and detect what's in range of this so Let's go and say, first of all, let's go to the bottom of the script here and say, let's go and create a method. And this is going, this is just a built-in method so that we can see the size of our attack uh, range. So let's go and say on draw gizmo selected. And then this is going to be gizmos dot draw. What is it? It's going to be um, draw wire y sphere and then this is just going to be our attack point so we're going to want it the center of it to be our attack point so attack point dot position and then the radius is going to be our attack range attack range not attack attack range there we go so let's save that and let's go back to our scene and see we should be able to see a circle now for our attack for our player so this is going to be our attack range so, I mean, it's kind of big. Let's, let's reduce that. Something like that, maybe. So we only want to be able to attack in this range. So anything that is over there, we should be able to attack. So I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Like that, maybe. It should be fine. So anything that's in that circle when we attack. So say, for example, if we're standing here and we press the mouse, the left mouse button, and it, it can detect that where this crate is in range of the circle so it's going to register that we're attacking it and then therefore it should go and reduce the strength of the box assuming that the box has a strength Rem remember if the box does not have a strength it cannot be broken so let's go and do that now the next thing we want to do in our attack method here is to figure out if or well not if but what we are 
colliding with in amongst that uh, range. So to do that, we are going to get an array of colliders. So let's go and say collider 2D. It's going to be an array. And we're going to call this ob objects. What are we going to call it? Um, ob yeah, objects hit. Just because it's not, I would say enemies hit, but we're not always going to be um, colliding with enemies because our crate is not an enemy. So let's just say objects hit for now. And then, well, this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to, and this is where we're going to use our physics 2D method. So this is going to be the physics 2D dot, what is it, overlap, circle, um, so everything that it overlaps in that circle, this is where we can go and add them to this objects hit array. And then we can go through these objects. And if it's the correct one, like say, for example, it's a, if it's our enemy, we can go and reduce the strength from, or yeah, reduce the health from it. And then if it's a box, we can go and reduce the strength from it. So let's go say overlap circle. All. And then in here, we want to give it our attack point dot position. And then the next one is going to be the radius. So this is going to be our attack range. And then the next one is going to be the layer mask. So if, I believe if you don't do this, you only put the position and the range. It is going to allow you to attack anything. That, so anything that intersects with that circle, it will register, which is not what we want. We want only th only the only we only want the attack layers that we have. Uh, specified in our attack layers. So let's go and say attack layers. And then therefore that should go and uh, give us some indication of us only attacking our crate and our, what's it called, our enemy. So that's fine. Now let's go and see what we're doing here. So Once we've got this array, let's go and print it out. So let's go and say print, uh, what is it called? Print objects hit dot, no, no dot. Objects hit dot, uh, actually not, let's not do that. Let's just go and say, you know what? Let's put this in a for, for each statement because there's going to be multiple. Well, they're not really, but if there is multiple, we can go and print all of them. So let's go and say for each. And then in here, let's go and say, let's go say um, collider 2D. And we'll call this object. Actually, let's call this hit. And then, yeah, let's say hit uh, in our objects hit. And then we can go and say print the. Let's go and say hit with a hit dot name. So that should print out everything that we hit that's in range of this circle. So let's go play the game and see if this actually works. So hopefully it does. So you can see that we now have hit ourselves. So that's, we don't really want that. What's on our player? Why have we got an enemy player? player enemy layer attached to that that's not what we want so let's go and add a layer onto this and call this player okay so let's go say player we want a player enemy and then yeah that doesn't really matter a spider is our enemy and then the box should have a attack okay so that's fine so now when we press attack you can see that that doesn't get printed so where's this where's this coming from crate dot okay we don't need to print that anymore because we have manually assigned a strength of two to our crate so let's go test it out on our crate so now this is where we had the problem with in our previous attempt to do this so when we went onto our crate here you can see that now every time you can watch this this number in the corner here every time i click on the attack or click the mouse button and register an attack you can see that we are now attacking something whereas before it wasn't registering that so if i go down to our spider and sit here and attack our spider you can see that we have now hit our spider once and i can go and do it again 
and then can I do it again? Yeah, so there you can see we've done now done it 10 times. So that's fine. That's working. Now there is a there is a, a slight issue with our attack animation. You can see that once I move, I want to be able to attack something, but our animation is not playing. It only plays when we stop. So if I click here, you can see the animation plays. If I run to the right and press the mouse button, you can hear the sound, but as soon as I stop, that is when the animation plays. And so let's go and fix that. So to do that, I believe it's got something to do with our animate animation tree diagram, whatever this is called. So let's go to our player. So you can see that our attack animation is only allowed to play from an idle state, which is not what we want. We want it to be able to play from any state. So let's go and can we delete this? Let's delete our attack animation and then I am going to bring our animation. So coin create fire, no assets, 2D platformer. We have built in animations because this, this game comes with animations. So here's our animations for our player. Where's our player? Sprites, bar animations, main character, player, climb, run, roll, no. Do we have it? Yeah, we should have it somewhere. Where is it? Uh, animations. Sp I I don't create. It's somewhere in here. Let's go and say attack. Attack. No. Actually, you know what? Let's just go and make it again because. Player run create new clip. Let's go and say attack. So this is going to be in our, where is it? Assets, animations. Let's, let's just create in here. We don't really need to create a folder for it. So let's go say sprites, where is it? Main character, player, climb, die, idle, jump, roll, run. Oh, this is where it is. It's going to be in our sphere. Spear, where is it? So I think we're using our sword. So let's go to our attack one and then let's bring in all of these and we can drag them into here. Let's just go to our scene quick and then play the and see if this is okay. So that's a bit fast. Let's go spread it out a bit. That's fine. Okay, so now on our player, we should be able to see an attack method here. So we want to be able to attack this from any, any state. So to do that, we can go and click on any state and make our transition from there to an attack and then because we want it to happen instantly we don't want a f well let's get rid of our fixed duration uh, transition duration is going to be zero and then let's go and give it a condition of attack just so that when we go and set the trigger to attack it plays that animation now we don't want to get stuck in this animation so let's go and create a transition back to idle and then this is going to have an exit time so we'll set the exit time to one the transition duration is going to be zero because we want it to happen instantly so that's fine and then we can get rid of the conditions because we want it to go back as soon as it is finished so let's go and test that out let's go back to our game and then let's play it and see if we can now attack when we run so you can see now that we are running we can attack at the same time and when I stop running it doesn't play the animation because we have played it whilst we are running. So that is perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, now we need to figure out how we are going to deal with tallying our box or crate in this case that we need to go and deduct strength from it. So to do that we need to go and change this to be a public variable because we need to access this from our player class so to do that let's go and say let's see can we access the script off of it so let's go and say hit dot get component now this is where we are going to have a little bit of a problem so we'll do it just for this episode we will manually do this and then i'll figure out a way we can do this that is 
better practice. So let's go and say hit component. Let's go and say get hit dot get component. We want to get the script off of it. So let's go and say create. And then we, what we can do is we can go and say, actually, let's go and say var crate is going to be equal to hit dot get component and get the script off of that. Actually, hold on. Let's see. How do you want to do this? Um, where is, let's go to our crate. So 2D platformer. Sprites, background, animation, objects. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just do it how I was thinking. So this is bad practice, but just to end this episode, because it's getting quite long, we will go and say var create dot is equal to hit dot get component. And we're going to get this script off of it. And then we can say, what are we going to say? Um, that's it. And then here we can go and say create dot strength is going to be deducted by one. So that that every time we hit our crate, we need to go and deduct the strength of it. And then here now we need to work in our crate script. So we can go and say, first of all, assign everything. And then we need to, in a update method, we can go and check to see if our strength is ever equal to zero. So if it is, then we can go and break it. So let's go and say, bring back our update method. And here we can go and say, if the strength is equal to zero, then we can, for now, we'll just go and say print. What is it? It's going to be create. destroyed but we also want to go and say what is it it's going to be animator dot set what was it let's go to our crate quick and see box animator new state smash that is going to be trigger set to break so set trigger and then we just need to say break so i believe that should play our correct animation so let's go make sure that's saved that's saved and that's saved so instead at some point once we have figured out how to create a burst of coins we can go and spawn that into the scene when we break the crate so let's test this out and see so it should only require require us to break the crate or hit the crate twice so that's one and that's two okay so that's perfect now this is a problem so let's go and say if the strength is equal to zero, let's go and break the crate. Okay, so because this is happening in the update method, that is going to be called every single time our what's it called our uh, our crate is broken. So let's go and add a boolean in here. So let's go and say public. Let's go. I don't even know if this is going to work, but this is just a temporary fix for now. So public bool. Uh, is broken and that's going to be set to false and then let's see if the strength is equal to zero and the crate is not broken so is broken is equal to false then we can go and destroy the crate and print the name out just saying that the crate is destroyed and then we need to go and say is broken is going to be equal to true so let's go and do that and that way we should really only get that message being printed out once hopefully that's the idea who knows if that's going to work so let's go and test it out we should require one and two okay so that crate is destroyed now you can see we don't get that that message being printed out continuously now let's let's go and see if we have a another crate in the scene now it's not going to work because if we even if we do 
I believe we haven't added the create script onto it. Also, I don't actually think we have one. I do. I thought I put one at the end of the game, but I'm starting to think that there isn't going to be one there. So let's see. This we are also this. We need to work on this level because it's it looks terrible. I need to go back to the animation, not the animations, the background. Okay, so we have no other crate in the script, but in the scene, but that's fine. So I am now going to create a prefab out of this crate because it's actually I'm not going to do that yet because we haven't done the burst. So overrides. Let's just go and apply all of that so that we don't have to. We're not going to forget about that. Let's just go and apply our overrides to that, and then our box is not a prefab. But let's just make it one just for now. So let's go and create this and put this in here. So first of all, let's go and rename this to create. And then we can go and drag this in here. And now that becomes a create prefab. So that's perfect. Everything's up to date. And that's it. So that is going to be it for today's episode. So we finally got our crate working. The only thing that's left that we need to do now is go and uh, spawn in or instantiate a burst of coins so that when you break the box, something actually happens. Uh, and then after like a few seconds or something, we'll actually go and get rid of the crate pieces that are left in the scene because they just look terrible. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. So if you haven't done so, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button up here. And then if you haven't watched our previous episodes or any other episode, please go ahead and watch this one. It's somewhere over here, I think. Uh, but yeah, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in next week's video. So enjoy your weekend and goodbye.